Hello, and welcome to my lecture on Introduction to Evolution. Evolution is one of those topics in biology that is foundational to all the biological sciences. As a matter of fact, it is the number one theory in the biological sciences. Um, it's been said that nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. With that said, it's also a somewhat controversial topic in the general public. To the scientific community, the facts of evolution are undeniable, and it's the strongest scientific theory there is. To the outside community, sometimes there are issues with this topic. Let's begin with an introduction and let you know what evolution is from a scientific viewpoint. If you're going to define evolution, there are several definitions out there. Probably the most common definition is just change. Uh, it's change over time in a population. Uh, well, that's one of the keys. Uh, it's populations change over time, not individuals. So you're not thinking of some individual organism, say a cat evolving and sprouting wings to fly all of a sudden or something like that. The population of felines would evolve over time or the population of humans or the population of dogs, whatever it may be. Descent with modification is probably my favorite definition. It comes from Charles Darwin. Uh, Charles Darwin's often credited with discovering evolution. In, in actuality, he discovered a mechanism, two mechanisms, natural selection and sexual selection, but he did not come up with the idea of evolution. That's something that predates his existence. Uh, a more specific scientific definition you can see at the bottom is a change in the frequency of alleles. Those are variants of genes within a gene pool from one generation to the next. A very very specific definition. Here are the basics of it. To accept evolution you have to first accept that variation exists. So you look around any population, how can anyone deny that variation exists within populations? Not all crickets are going to be exactly the same. Definitely not all humans are exactly the same. Not all cheetahs, anything of that nature. So variation does exist. Um, the sources of variation if you got a basic understanding of biology, come from mutations. Uh, they also come from sexual, uh, the whole sexual process of sharing your genes with another individual. That's an intermixing of the DNA, uh, crossing over during meiosis. So there's lots of sources of variation. You next have to accept that variations that exist are heritable, meaning that a variation that exists can be passed on to the next generation. And the idea of evolution relies on the fact that if there is variation, and that variation is heritable, that somewhere in that population there are going to be variations that are better suited to particular environments than others. It's those variations that are going to survive over time and reproduce into the next generation. The variations that are not so good for the environment tend to die off. So that's the basics of evolution. If you have a variation, if you accept that it's heritable, then you have to accept that those variations that are out there are not exactly 100% the same. Some are better suited than others. That's a, not a really a big step. and That's evolution in a nutshell. Uh, the main problem I think people have with this idea is time. Given vast amounts of time, this process of selection of different varieties can drastically change populations. And it's those long distances of time that people can sometimes have a hard time comprehending. Um, the NS and the SS at the bottom is natural selection and sexual selection. Uh, both ideas of Charles Darwin. Natural selection is something, you know, that would happen in nature. Nature selecting for a variation. For example, uh, the white fur color of polar bears. Uh, other fur colors do occur, but they typically do not live to be passed on to the next generation. So, you know why it becomes the most common. Um, sexual selection explained how animals could have these vastly you know, different traits between say the male and the female. Like the male peacock versus the female peacock is a sexual selection example. So we'll use the KISS method here for evolution. This sums it up in, in one little short paragraph. If you read over this you basically got the entire idea. This is the theory of evolution and it applies to a massive 
amount of things. So individuals that have a physical or a behavioral trait that better suits their environment are more likely to survive. Therefore, they're more likely to reproduce than those that don't have those traits. In time, the number of individuals that carry the good traits will increase. Those that have the less favored traits will decrease. That will change the population over time. Keep in mind, that is the definition of evolution, a change in the population over time. The theory as a whole explains everything in biology, the unity and the diversity that we see in life. It's extremely predictive. It's just one of the good points of any scientific theory. Uh, to pause for a second, you want to keep in mind that a theory is the end result of science. Theories do not turn into laws. They do not become any way stronger, necessarily. Uh, they accumulate facts over time. That makes them stronger. But a theory as a whole is the end result of science. So evolutionary theory will never turn into evolutionary law. Gravitational theory does not turn into gravitational law. The law of gravity is a part of gravitational theory. So facts, laws, inferences based on science are all parts of a theory. So this word is grotesquely misused in the general public. So the predictive nature is very strong with this theory. Um, one quick example of we see changes in the microbial community to drug resistance. MRSA, methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, is a pretty bad one that's out there. Uh, there's MDRTB, multi-drug resistant tuberculosis. These are things that have happened since the advent of drugs, and microbes have evolved resistances to them through the same process of variation, selection, and time. The process is identical. It explains the changes in drug resistance. Variation and selection in time also explains where you came from and everything else on this planet. Medicine chooses models based off evolutionary theory. We study the mammals and the mice for this reason. Here's a quick example of the beauty of natural selection. The natural selection you see uh, right here. This little guy, there's his eyes, antenna. Here's his front arms. This is a praying mantis. And look at the midsection, even colored, much like the, the stem part of this plant. Now that is natural selection at its finest. Refining a species to fit its environment extremely well. All right? This is just a product of the variations that existed within the population, selection for those variations, and time. Artificial selection is something we humans have used a lot. As you can see here, the, the Great Dane and this little miniature dog here. Uh, all dogs are descended from wolves, and there is a great amount of variation in dogs. But that's been a product of not nature, but a product of man, selecting artificially for certain traits. But the process is still the same. This is one of the strong evidences from Charles Darwin had. It's like, if you can take and within just a few thousand years, create all these varieties from just artificial selection, what can nature do in a few million years? Sexual selection happens to be one of my favorites. As you can see here, one of the birds of paradise. Um, apparently, that's what the females like. <laughs> so, sexual selection explains the extravagances in life. Uh, Darwin once remarked, the sight of a peacock makes me sick before he figured out the idea of sexual selection. You see the little caption here. Uh, I'm so fine it doesn't matter if I also attract every predator for miles. Uh, that's the only thing that could explain the size and the colors of a peacock because that would not be good to have in a natural environment. This is basically, you know, if you look at it, this is a eat it Joe's sign. And it's very heavy. It's extremely costly to grow these feathers as they fall out, you know, over time during the non-breeding season. So you have to invest a great amount of energy to grow this thing. You've got to drag it around everywhere, try and fly with it. And it's all about sex. 